Sutra. Then, Ananda, after all your organs are completely freed, you will glow with an inner light. All the inframortal defining objects and the material world will thereupon change their appearance like ice which is melted by hot liquid in response to your mind. They will transform and become the knowledge and awareness which is unsurpassed enlightenment. Commentary Then, Ananda, after all your organs are completely freed, if you can enter one, the other five will also cease to be. The six organs will be purified simultaneously if you can perfect one organ completely. Then the six organs will be freed from their particular habits and you will glow with an inner light. Your self-nature will glow like a lustrous and flawless piece of jade. All the ephemeral defiling objects and the material world, the mountains, rivers, great earth, dwellings, buildings and so forth will thereupon change their appearance like ice which is melted by hot liquid, they will disappear just as ice does when boiling water is poured on it. In response to your mind, in a very short period of time, they will transform and become the knowledge and awareness which is unsurpassed enlightenment. When the form ceases to be, the truth is pure. The knowledge and awareness referred to here is the true and actual knowledge and awareness, not the false knowing and awareness spoken of above. When the false is gone, the true appears. In response to your mind, it reveals itself. Sutra Ananda it is like an ordinary person who has confined, seeing to his eyes, ask him to close his eyes and he will immediately see darkness before him. The six organs in his head and feet will be enveloped in total darkness. In the person traces the shape of external things with his hands, then even though he cannot see, he will recognize someone's head and feet if he feels them. This knowledge and awareness are the same way. Commentary Ananda, it is like an ordinary person. Let me give you an example. Consider a worldly person who has confided, seeing to his eyes. He has gathered either seeing a sense into his eyes, ask him to close his eyes, and he will immediately see darkness before him. You say to him, shut your eyes immediately. Suddenly he is plunged into darkness. The six organs and his head and feet will be enveloped in total darkness. If the person traces the shape of external things with his hands, then even though he cannot see, he will recognize someone's head and feet if he feels them. If this worldly person who has his eyes closed and can't see anything should pass his hand over the body of someone near him, he will know the person's head as a head when he runs his hands over it. And when he follows the shape of the person's feet, he will realize their feet. This knowledge and awareness are the same way. Awareness and knowing still function. When your six organs have been is extinguished, the capacity to know and be aware is not in the least depleted. The illustration here confirms that even with your eyes closed, your awareness and knowing do not disappear. They remain the same. Sutra, if light is the condition requisite for seeing, then darkness brings the absence of seeing. But to perceive without light means no means that no dark manifestation can obscure the seeing. Commentary, if light is the condition requisite for seeing, if the reason we see is because of light, then darkness brings the absence of seeing. When it gets dark, you cannot see, but to perceive without light means that no dark manifestation can obscure the seeing. If you don't need to rely on external light, but put forth light from your self-nature, then there's no kind of darkness that can obscure your seeing. It can't obstruct you and 
prevent you from seeing if you are genuinely enlightened, if you have been certified as having obtained the fruit of a hardship. Then day and night are the same, light and darkness are the same. You can see equally well in either. An ordinary person cannot see a, in a dark room, but an heart can. So it is said, enlightenment is like a lamp in the night, or a sudden light in a windowless room. However, that is just an analogy. Don't get exact to it being exactly like that. What is expressed in words is not necessarily true. That which cannot be expressed is truth. What we are talking about here is just a certain state. You may see the room as dark while someone else may perceive light in it. This is due to the differences in people's karmic responses. If you are enlightened, then night is the same as day. Sleeping and dreams are the same as your waking state. You won't even be confused or upside down in your dreams. In fact, when you are enlightened, you very rarely dream at all. Why is it necessary to cultivate? Because you don't have control of yourself. Perhaps you are in control and clear-headed when you are awake, but you lose control when you get confused. When you are healthy, you are in control, but when you get sick, you lose control. You are ineffectual. Perhaps you can remain in control when you are sick and not get confused or do upside down things, but you are still not in control when you are asleep. You may say you can remain in control when you are asleep, but when you have dreams, you lose control. You become upside down. If you can remain in control when you are dreaming, you may lose control when you are about to die. At that time, the four elements separate and Though you might like to say, I'd rather not die right now, no blindness is extended to you. You're certainly not going to get out of it. We people cultivate the way in order to be able to remain in control when we are healthy, when we are awake and clear-headed, when we are sick, when we are asleep, when we are dreaming, even more when we die. We want to be such that we can die if we want to search that if we don't want to die, we can go on living without it being any problem. We want to be free of those restrictions, then we can be said to be free of birth and death. If we want to live, we can, and if we want to die, we can do that too. For instance, if you want to live, you can live for several thousand years like Patriarch Mahakashyapa. If you want to die, you can do so standing up, sitting down, or lying down. You can do it any way you want. Sutra, once the organs and objects are eradicated, how can the enlightened brightness not become perfect and wonderful? Commentary, Ananda, once the organs and objects are eradicated, once the six sense organs and six sense objects are done away with, then no dark manifestation can obscure the seeing. When the darkness obscures them, the organs cannot exhibit their strength and function. How can the enlightened brightness not become perfect and wonderful? How can you say that the fundamental brightness, brightened, enlightened brightness will not become perfect and wonderful? How can you say that it will not return to the source and become perfect and wonderful once again? Hearing is not sound. Volume 4, Chapter 5. Sutra Ananda said to the Buddha, Word on it one, as the Buddha has said, the resolve for enlightenment on the coarse ground which seeks the eternal must be in neutral accord with the ground of fruition. Commentary Ananda has once again given rise to doubts, and so he comes up with another question. Ananda said to the Buddha, Word honored one, as the Buddha has said, according to the doctrines you discussed in the past, the resolve for enlightenment on the cause ground, which seeks uh, the internal of the cause ground, you bring forth the true resolve for enlightenment, which you hope will remain forever and never be destroyed. 
you must be in mutual accord with the ground of fruition. It must not be opposition with the principles of fruition. Sutra won't honor one. The ground of fruition is body. Nirvana, true suchness, the Buddha nature. The Amala consciousness, the empty treasury of the first common. The great perfect mirror wisdom. But although it is called by the seven names, it is pure and perfect. Its substance is durable, not li like a royal vara, everlasting and indestructible. Commentary won't on it when the ground of fruition is body. Nirvana, true suchness, the Buddha nature, the Amala consciousness, the empty treasury of the thirst common, the great perfect mirror wisdom. Body is the way of enlightenment, Chao Dao. Nirvana is said to be neither produced nor destroyed. Bu Sheng Bu Mia. True suchness is utterly and not false. A single non-dual suchness. Suchness is not a thing at all. It is like empty space. True suchness is just true emptiness. In one truth is all truth. But if there is the slightest lack of truth, it cannot be called true suchness. The Buddha nature is inherent in all beings. The Amala consciousness is the consciousness devoid of filth or gaoshu. Prior to enlightenment, this consciousness is called the Eight Consciousness, the Alaya Consciousness. Alaya means storehouse. Tang Shi, the name indicates that it contains everything within it. The Amala is the transformation of the Eighth Consciousness into the Pure Consciousness. The Empty Treasury of the Thus Come One is another name and the great perfect mirror wisdom is also a name but although it is called by the seven names although the ground of fruition has different titles it is pure and perfect in its principle in its nominal aspect it is pure and perfect its substance is durable its essence is durable like royal vara everlasting and indestructible it will never be destroyed Sutra, if the seeing and hearing are apart from light and darkness, movement and stillness, and penetration and obstruction, and uh, ultimately devoid of substance, they are then like thoughts apart from sense objects that do not exist at all. Commentary, if the seeing and hearing are apart from light and darkness, movement and stillness, and penetration and obstruction, and are ultimately devoid of substance. Then their essence ceases to be. They are then like thoughts apart from sense objects. They do not exist at all. The thoughts of the mind don't have substance either. When separated from the defiling objects which correspond to them, they are entirely non-existent. Sutra, how can what is ultimately destroyed be a cause by which one cultivates in the hope of obtaining the fruition of the first camel's sevenfold eternal abode. Commentary The mind organ is devoid of a substance when separated from its defiling objects. How can what is ultimately destroyed be a cause by which one cultivates in the hope of obtaining the fruition of the first camel's sevenfold eternal abode? How can it be used in consideration to obtain the first common sevenfold, everlasting fruition of body, nirvana, true suchness, the Buddha nature, the Amala consciousness, the empty treasury of the first common and the great perfect mirror wisdom? Sutra, world honored one, when it is apart from light and darkness, the thing is ultimately empty, just as when there is no sense object. The essence of thought is extinguished. Commentary won't honor one. When it is apart from light and darkness, if it were to be separated from light and dark, the thing is ultimately empty, just as when there is no sense object. The sense of thought is extinguished. Thoughts cannot arise. Sutra, I go back and forth in circles, minutely searching, and basically there is no such thing as in my mind or its objects. 
just what should be used to seek the unsurpassed enlightenment. Commentary. I go back and forth, researching and investigating in circles. I go through the process again and again, minutely searching, and basically there's no such thing as my mind or its objects. My mind doesn't exist. None of it exists. Just what should be used to seek the unsurpassed enlightenment, to accomplish the enlightenment on the ground of fruition. I search everywhere, and there isn't any mind. I can't use a mind subject to production and extinction, and I can't find the true mind. So how do I set up a mind on the coarse ground to seek the enlightenment on the ground of fruition? Sutra, the first common previously said, it was a tranquil essence, perfect and eternal. His present contradiction defies belief and is the result to idle theorizing. How can the first common's words be true and utter? Commentary, the first common previously said, it was a tranquil essence, perfect and eternal. He discussed the tranquil, perfect, eternal essence of seeing. His present contradiction defies belief and is a result of not to ego theorizing. But the drama, the Buddha speaks, is not ego theory. Yet, how can the first common's words be true and natural? The doctrine the Buddha has explained contradicts itself. First, the Buddha said, don't use a mind subject to production and extinction. And later, he said, it is just that the mind which you use in cultivation. I, Ananda, cannot find the mind in question, and the more I hear, the less I understand. How can the Buddha still be speaking the truth? The Buddha should be speaking the truth, true words, actual words, not false words. Why is it that what the Buddha says contradicts itself? Sutra, I only hope the Buddha will let fall his great compassion and will instruct us who do not understand and who are holding on tightly. Commentary. Now I only hope the world honored one, the Buddha, will let fall his great compassion and will instruct us to who do not understand and who are holding on tightly. We are grasping tightly to the dramas of the small cycle and are afraid to let go. Sutra. The Buddha told Ananda, you study and learn much. But you have not yet distinguished our flows in your mind. You know only the causes of being upside down. But when the true inversion manifests, you really cannot recognize it yet. Commentary. After hearing what Ananda has just said, the Buddha doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. The Buddha told Ananda, You study and learn much. You are ill did and have a strong memory, but you have not yet extinguished outflows. You still haven't obtained the extinction of outflows. In your mind, you know only the causes of being upside down. But when the true inversion manifests, you really cannot recognize it yet. Just as it was said above, you know only how to write prescriptions. If the medicine were before you, you would not recognize it. So I say now that you are well versed in the reasons for being upside down, but when you confront a genuinely upside down situation, you don't recognize it. You don't know what is upside down. Sutra, in order to strengthen your sincerity and faith, I will try to make use of an ordinary happening to dispel your doubts. Commentary, in order to strengthen your sincerity and faith, I'm afraid you are not sincere enough. And so if I told you outright, you wouldn't believe me. You don't have enough faith. You're not sufficiently humble. I will try to make use of an ordinary happening to dispel your doubts. I tried using a common situation to explain this principle for you and get rid of your doubts this way.